Hello and let's talk about the ban on 59 Chinese apps including TikTok. The Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology released a statement on this yesterday evening. According to the government, this was a targeted move to ensure the safety and sovereignty of the Indian cyberspace. The ministry's statement said that it had received complaints of certain apps and to quote them, stealing and surreptitiously transmitting users' data in an unauthorized manner to servers outside India. The ministry goes on to claim that this is a risk to the country's sovereignty and integrity before announcing the ban. Among the apps banned is TikTok which reportedly has close to 120 million users in India. Some of the other apps such as Share It and UC Browser also have over 100 million users as users as per media reports. But the larger question is regarding the relevance of this move. In previous episodes we have examined how the India China economic relationship is quite deep and how jingoistic calls for boycott make no real sense. In fact some of the giant tech firms which form part of our daily life and whose services provide us food and transport have Chinese investment for instance. And of course there's also the other question of whether this kind of gesture even serves any purpose in resolving disputes with China. One thing is certain, it did please certain sections of the media and hardcore supporters of the government who were struggling a bit at the confused response of the government to recent incidents on the line of actual control. We talked to journalists on India Chakravarti to get a sense of some of the economic implications of the ban. Thank you Anindya for joining us. So Thank you, uh, we see that 59 apps have been banned there's been a lot of talk about Uh, the government notification says it's about security it's about data not being uh, the you data of billions of users not being safe so what's your initial take on the move well you know uh, of course uh, there should have been some move against many of these apps in any case because they're not secure so uh, it's not only a question of whether the chinese government has access to these this data there is no reason for these companies to have access to our data in any case now uh, questions have been raised about tiktok uh, not only in india but also in the west because there is a sense that uh, tick the data tiktok collects can be accessed by the chinese government i understand tiktok has been given a chance to explain its position and they probably meeting tiktok india is meeting uh, ministry officials today indian government officials today to explain that they do not have never shared indian data and they will not share indian data even if they're asked to uh but obviously the timing is essentially about uh, sending a message and uh, in the absence of uh, you know military options other diplomatic options these are these are the minimal messages that can be sent to be honest and for the modi government this is a great message to send because it will be amplified by godi media and turned into some sort of a surgical strike we saw what happened on some channels just last night right 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 on the other hand uh, it is true that nonetheless the same argument can be made against almost uh, all the other apps we use on a daily Absolutely. basis google facebook the same argument stands Absolutely. so Absolutely. uh so, in fact google facebook there have been questions about google's uh, proximity to the american government to american uh, uh, intelligence agencies uh and this has not been raised by outsiders but by americans themselves and uh, facebook etc all this data is available and uh, can be tapped by various governments and who's going to stop them from uh, tapping it so this question can be raised for every single country the question is that of course whether strategically geopolitically who are you aligned with in the you, uh, you know it's increasingly moving from a unipolar world post 1989 back to a kind of bipolar world it'll take some time when uh, probably none of the established uh, developed countries are going or even developing countries are going to align with china but there are china has significant control uh, influence in africa it has significant influence in the subcontinent today especially um, Uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. So it is ultimately a question of how you're going to make alliances. Whether you know now of the 59 apps, frankly, maybe I'm not an app user, and the young people who use Android phones probably have more understanding of what these apps are. But other than TikTok, I am not familiar with most of these apps, to be honest. Right? Uh, there are other Chinese apps which have not been banned. There's a lot. There are many Indian app with heavy. chinese investment which have not been banned okay you could say that the data is not being controlled by china but who knows who knows all this right so the uh, something like tiktok for instance which is the most probably the most famous of these apps has about i think uh, uh, what 120 million active users in india right now and uh, 
um, 120 million active users. That's a huge number of active users, if you think about it. That is um, a 10 percent, uh, eight nine percent of India's population, and uh, it is essentially you. I don't know, Prashant, have you ever been on TikTok? In your watch, I watch the videos, but obviously nothing, nothing. No, no, but on the app or the videos are forwarded. Or oh, outside, outside. On, on, outside. Yeah, but I, I've been tracking this app for the last uh, few uh, months, actually, to see its political content. Its political content is heavily right wing. And it is a great app for uh, pushing a lot of kind of ideas to the youth. It had a, it was used heavily during Kavar Yatras, during the Ayodhya, uh, you know, the Babri Masjid uh, case. I, a lot of it was coming, small videos about how it is important uh, for uh, Hindus to have the mandir there and stuff like that. So it is, a, it is a space where the lower middle class find a way to become famous in 10-15 uh, minutes, right? Uh, not 10-15 minutes, 10-15 seconds, actually. <laughs> so it's about... A, and uh, it is extremely popular amongst, uh, uh, I would say, those who are formally literate but actually cannot read or write. So it has a huge base and it's very popular amongst people like me also. I love to watch those videos. But uh, uh, it, is, it has 120 million users. And already, as soon as it was banned, I went on TikTok to see what is happening. And most popular TikTok uh, artists were putting out videos immediately and saying, follow me on Instagram. So they, um, of course, if you, uh, as far as uh, I understand, if you have the app already on your phone, it's not disappearing. It's not available for new downloads. So TikTok as a company had hoped to get about a hundred crore in revenue in the July to September, uh, which is from, uh, the, uh, this is the latest report that I read, that July to September quarter in 2020. You know? It is not uh, a huge amount for TikTok, uh, the overall company, but its most active downloads are in India. It, uh, its revenues are mostly US and China driven, right? So the question is that uh, will TikTok uh, be affected badly by this? Yes, in terms of its popularity, but not immediately in terms of revenue. Right. So it's not really what many, I mean, I'm seeing many newspaper report, uh, reports saying that it's really going to hit Chinese companies hard. Uh, it is going to affect a China, few Chinese companies, but uh, is India a great revenue space? I don't think so. Is it going to affect uh, advertising for some Indian companies? Many Indian companies have actually used TikTok for advertising. Yeah. Uh, you have these advertisements and also product placements. TikTok uh, vi influencers, viral TikTok stars, often uh, use their space to pro produce, uh, so place products. So, Here's a platform that is going. Now, right. the question is, how important is this? Obviously, it is, it is virtually, you know, it's, it's nothing. Now, uh, uh, the question is, can the Indian government really follow it up with certain other moves to, um, in the economy? We have discussed this in the past. It's very difficult given India's dependence in various sectors in terms of input. Uh, you know, you will see people saying, boycott. I threw out my Chinese product. And I bought this Indian product, not knowing that the Indian product is actually made in China. It's just the brand which is made in India, or at least 60-70% of what's inside is actually made in China. Because China sells 25% of all inputs in the world. So it's not that easy. Is China going to be affected dramatically by the disappearance of TikTok? I am one of those, without being a conspiracy theorist, who does believe that all apps like these are security issues, right? That security issue could be a national security issue. It could be a personal uh, privacy issue. And as you've rightly pointed out, it's not only about Chinese apps. That's true for all apps which are coming out of the U.S. for instance. Right, right. So in this context, also, there's a lot of talk about, say, this is going to benefit the local uh, economy in terms of certain companies which might rise to take its place. But that, does that look really like a possibility? I think there are a few uh, Indian uh, social media companies which have uh, have some kind of traction. Uh, I'm forgetting what one. Uh, I, I've really forgotten the names of them. I downloaded one of them to check it. It's very boring. It's a it, it's a meme sharing uh, platform. 
uh, you need significant amount of bandwidth and uh, you know server space to host so, so much video uh, it's not that easy to provide that space uh, but uh, yes uh, i think the biggest uh, which is very clear the advantage is to instagram i don't know who owns instagram it's either facebook or instagram is facebook facebook right so the immediate advantage is actually face instagram because you go to tiktok right now every tiktok artist is saying you can watch me on instagram right you can watch, there's a guy called something oi indori who does these pranks on the road and i watch him i don't have a tiktok account but it comes up on my home page all the time probably because i watch it the most right and i saw oi indori saying that please go to my instagram account immediately many people one guy said i have 1.7 million tiktok followers at least 1 lakh of them please follow me on instagram insta pe aa jaiye so instagram is definitely going to be the immediate gain now i'm not that familiar with instagram whether that becomes the same space or not i don't know that's right. the point so i don't think indian companies are going to gain unless unless there's a huge patriotic surge uh where people say i am going to use this indian app and uh, you know that la- those things last for a short time i i remember uh case of romanium who was uh, i think defense secretary at one time and he was i used to work with him in times of india he was uh, uh he was a consulting editor in times of india as well he told us about how when he was in japan uh his uh people japanese people would line up to buy very expensive japanese goods uh but not buy foreign goods which were cheaper and better so it depends on you know there are moments of extreme right. nationalism jingoism when right. people will push move towards it but you know if the experience is not the same mm-hmm. it's not going to last for that long so Absolutely. i i don't know whether indian companies are going to gain from it Absolutely. maybe there will be a bit of a push but which indian company is an indian company i mean think of paytm think of uh, you know flipkart think of all these companies think of all the apps that we use most of them have foreign investments most of them have chinese investment which is alibaba tencent and you know the big vcs uh, which right. uh, operate so nothing seems to have been done to those exactly so ultimately it's mainly uh what do you call an instance like you said in some ways of uh, uh, more of a symbolic instance a bit of jingoism which has just been amplified by the media considerably to exactly if the media if the media were uh, you know uh, if you think about it uh, chomsky's uh, you know manufacturing of consent was written decades ago so in the us the media has been to a certain extent compliant right and whenever it comes to issues of Uh, internal security or even with the government so the question is maybe we built up an idea of a media which never existed i don't know but the current media the current mainstream media the current media which ha- in india which has money to push its message forward that media is completely a government uh, arm it's a it's a it's an arm of the state it's an ideological state apparatus of the most extreme kind that one can see so in that sense i would say that uh, it is not that difficult to build up a temporary jingoistic uh, sense because you know p i i i'm i saw on whatsapp one of my relatives said that i am uh, uh, thrown away my oppo phone and i'm buying some samsung made in india so right so <laughs> which is not in made in india as we know right thank you so much alindya <laughs> for talking to us thank you prashant That's all we have in this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from across the country. Until then, keep watching News Click.